In July 2014, the Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation labeled Molly Miller's disappearance an official homicide investigation. What was the moment like where you actually found out that Molly could have been murdered? I just broke down and, uh, and, uh, I'm sorry. But I prayed for a sign from her. And I had a dream that she was soaked in water and moss and on Con's property. They have a pond, so I think that's where she's at. Because I've had two dreams like that of her soaked in water, and it felt real when I hugged her. But she was just soaked, head to toe dripping in water. I think that's where she's at. I spoke to Con on September 1st, 2013. I went to his house and I asked Con if Molly and Colt were okay when he left them in the woods. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I never was with Molly and Colt. I, I didn't leave them in the woods. And I said, well, Con, I know you're lying. According to Molly's phone records and people she spoke to, she told them she was in a police chase with you. You left them in the woods. They didn't know where they were, and they needed a ride. And he just kept denying. I finally said, Con, I know she's dead. I, I said, I just don't know where she's at. I said, can you please just tell us where she's at? What do you say? His eyes were watering up like he was about to cry. And I said, Con, just please, just tell us where she's at. Do you think he murdered Molly? No. But he knows exactly what happened to her. For him to be showing this remorse, he knows what happened. question that everybody has is what happened right here? Why did it turn into a homicide at that point? Why didn't they just package the boy up and race him over to the house and call an ambulance? What was the cause of killing these two here? Why? And I don't know that we'll ever know the true story. There's only two people really know what happened, in my opinion, and that's Colby Barrick and Con Nip. You know, this is no place I'd like my child to die. That gives in the creeps that it's so close by their yeah. property and yeah. somebody out there. He's all staring at us. Somebody saw a laser go by. A laser? A laser? No, like a laser, like a beam. Like a like, scoop laser? Yeah, I think it was. I think Nip's over there watching us. It's Con. It's Con? That's him. Where is he? Joe Russell is on house arrest, but we found his address. He could be the key to uncovering what happened to Molly and Colt. So I'm heading to Joe Russell's house to see if he'll talk to me. That's the house right there, right? Is that him? That's him, right? I'm gonna get out of the car here and talk to him. How you doing? You hurt? Payne Lindsay. I'm doing a documentary about the disappearance of Colt and Molly. All right, no comments at all. No comments at all? Every time I say something, they take it back. They run back. They what do you mean? They turn it around on me. Who does? Everybody, newspaper, and everybody. What do they say? I ain't got no more to talk. Do you have any guilt about it? The family really wants you to talk, man. You, you what? You don't give a about the family? But it doesn't look good, right? I mean, you had corruption charges, man. Where are you going, man? Seat yourself. How's this whole process been to deal with? Terrible. About as terrible as you can get. This is my granddaughter. I thought she was perfect in every way. Loved her dearly. Loved her with all my heart. 
The anger is not having answers, not, not getting the help with the law enforcement like we needed in the very beginning. This should have been stopped the first, the first two or three months, and it was corrupted by the law enforcement. And so we couldn't get any answers, and we couldn't get nowhere. And it just builds anger. This is a small town. How long have you guys, or you personally, known the Nip family? Ever since I was a kid. You know, you're talking 40, 50 years. I knew these people. And we went to search Nip's property. As soon as I pulled up, got out of my pickup, they all pulled guns on me, helped me at gunpoint. And all I was gonna do is ask him, have you seen my granddaughter? You know, what do you know about it? And uh, they all come out with their guns. Why? Good question. That's what I kind of wonder. You know, what was they scared of? It's not legal to ask questions about your granddaughter. That's right. Wouldn't even let us search in the backyard. What do you think would be the motive for harming Molly? If they did kill Colt, then they had to kill Molly. She was the type that would take up for anybody. If they were hurting her friends or her family, she was going to take up for them. She may not have started, but she's going to finish it. She was just that type. She had a good heart, and she loved her friends and family. It's a terrible situation, and you feel so helpless. Molly was just at the wrong place, the wrong time. She was being a typical teenager. Yeah. This is the last thing you expect to happen here, you know. You, you naturally think it always mm -hmm. happens to somebody else. It don't. Where's Joe now? <laughs> no longer working there, right? <laughs> no, nope, he's... What uh, happened? Uh, apparently him and his son were selling meth out of, out of his house in his patrol vehicle and uh, taking girls from down on the river and taking them to their house. And Looking back, do you really think that Joe Russell put a stop to an investigation mm -hmm. that could have solved this by now, or we at least know what happened to Colt and Molly? In my opinion, yes. You know, the handgun and the machete that got turned in, when they wanted to pick up Khan, uh, nobody could find him, but all of a sudden, Joe, yeah, I've got him, and Joe goes and gets him. I, you know, I'm sure they had to have their long talk about what what to say, what not to say. Joe Russell, I, I think, is the most crookedest sheriff I've ever worked for. It's amazing it went on as long as it did. If it hadn't have been for Paula pushing the way she did to uncover all this stuff. At this point, six years later, what has to happen to solve this thing? I don't understand why, the, why their land still hasn't been searched. The nip land needs to be searched because everything's been searched around it. If they're innocent, why won't they let us search it? What's the hold up? I don't know. What kind of message would you want to send to those guys, the Nips? Is there one? It's not over. Paula's never going to give up. It's sad that she had to go to a, to a private investigator to get away from the, the sheriff's office. I mean, if you were sitting across from Joe right now, what would you say to him directly? He should have. He should have stepped up, not covered his family. Molly was 17 years old. Yeah, it's protect and serve. It's not cover for my family. So how would you describe Molly? <laughs> Wild, outgoing, fun, down to earth. Just an amazing person, in my opinion. I just loved her to death, like a sister. What was your relationship like? Well, we went from friends to best friends to sisters, and we were inseparable. Every summer, we were not a day apart. When did Molly start dating Colt? Did you know him? I have no idea who he is. I've just heard of him. So was that, like, shocking to you that she was dating someone and you didn't know? Yeah, because when the story came out that she was with Cole, I just thought it was just a group of people she was hanging out with. And then I later to find out she was dating him, and I had no idea. She just kept it a secret so her family wouldn't know. And was Molly close with her family? Yeah. With Colt and dating Colt, was it uncommon for 
Molly not to tell you something? Molly always told me everything. We shared all secrets and everything else. I have no idea why she would hide Colt from me, though. And what about Con Nip? Do you know what, were they friends? Were Molly and Con friends? Yeah. Were they close? No, at least not from where I was standing. What do you think Molly would want people to know about her? That she never had a care in the world. She lit up the room when she walked in. She was the greatest person I've met. That was the night of Molly calling 911 from her phone. It's kind of odd to be calling 911 as they're chasing you. Unless you don't want to partake in this chase yes. and you're scared out of your mind, and you're trying to say, hey, I'm not condoning this. I'm not a part of this. I'm a victim of this right now. Yeah. Get me out of here. But if she was calling 911 on purpose, then just that action alone, I think, tells us a little bit more about her state of mind that night. Like she was in danger at that point, then she very well may have been in danger later on. Right. So if the first guy you can't ignore is Con Nip. Two people go missing, and the person who was last seen with them driving around recklessly, spewing gravel at cop cars and going on a police chase is this guy Con Nip. And they were all in the woods together that night, and they never left the woods. Con Nip did. He's fine. What's his story? Doesn't have one. That's weird. So for me, He's top on the list. Not to mention this guy, right. who is the corrupt sheriff. That's a proven fact. We know this because right. he's no longer the sheriff. So Sheriff Joe Russell, he's the one who called off the chase that night, right? Apparently, that's what happened. There was a car chase, and it was clearly con nip on the radio. Mm -hmm. But he was telling his officers to pull back and end the chase. So they stopped chasing them, and that's why police never caught up to them and never looked further to see where the kids went. Thank you.